Good morning. Ricardo are in the business of designing and developing powertrain solutions for transportation, amongst other things. At Shoreham, we assemble and test engines for McLaren road-going cars. Ricardo assemble and attest about 100 engines per week to go into these road cars. We started this project in 2009 when we designed and developed the first prototypes and then moved in production, into production 18 months later. In 2009, we had a couple of production engineers and a car park. In 2011, we had a fully functioning engine assembly plant uh, on the site, capable of producing 50 engines per week, to which we added a second shift later on. Our customers are very focused on quality, and since we carry the engine warranty, we also are very focused on quality. Even though we are a low or niche volume manufacturer, we have to achieve the high levels of quality that are normally associated with the likes of Toyota or Ford. To that end, we have adopted lean manufacturing techniques right from the very beginning. Our engine assembly design philosophy is no faults forward. That means at every stage of the build, we do not allow the engine to move to the next step without critical assembly steps being validated by some kind of confirmative feedback. In practice, th this means error-proofing at every stage. Any manufacturing process is governed by QCD, quality, cost and delivery. And all three of these must be held in tension for a good product. And all of them form the heart of lean manufacturing. Lean manufacturing is not just one thing. It is not just in time or batch of one production or five S's or any number of Japanese acronyms. It is a method of working that empowers operators and assembly team members to control their own quality and include all these other techniques as well. And it is different from the methods that were traditionally used in mass manufacture. Lean manufacturing is about the elimination of waste. And waste is an activity that does not add value. And value is an activity that transforms a product in the way that the customer is willing to pay for. By using these definitions, it is easier to judge whether a manufacturing process, manufacturing or processing task is value add or not. Simply moving stock around costs money, but does not add value. Inspection does not transform the part, so does not add value. Any manufacturing process can be broken down into discrete steps or operations. These can be illustrated using a system or P diagram. On the left is the input, in this case it's an operator with a spade and a measure, and the operation is a centre box. In this example, fill a pot with soil. This is the sum total of my horticultural knowledge. <laughs> <coughs> the good part output is that the soil is to a correct level in the pot. However, this simple operation takes place with real people who are subject to variation. These are called noise factors, and the most likely noise factors are to do with people or the tools that they use, or don't use. So, for example, the operator may not have listened to instructions, may have had a bad day, or distracted by a mobile phone in their pocket. These, these factors risk pushing an ideal good part output into a defect, or in lean manufacturing terms, into waste, such as a missed operation, partially complete operation or an incorrect operation. Other noise factors commonly experienced are piece to piece variation or part variation where a supply component varies from others previously supplied so that the output is varied. In this example it might be the soil quality or a variation in pot size. In our low volume engine manufacture we have tier one suppliers who would normally supply the likes of Ford or Toyota in high volume. When supplying us at very low volumes, we may not get the quality attention and due care that we require. So this becomes a focus for our supplier quality engineers. In any good process, we have controls and we try to, to apply them to counteract the noise factor. These controls can be directly targeted to the most common noise factors or they might be more general controls such as good training. The control factor is aiming to push the output away from making waste 
back into good output. In our engine build, each process step that we take is an instruction displayed on a screen for the operator or an HMI, human machine interface, as a control factor. If we link two uh, process steps together, such as, and I'm really stepping the boat out here, fill a pot with soil and then plant a seedling, then at the end of the first step, we must have some kind of verification to ensure that the level was been achieved before we move on to the second stage. That verification may come in the form of 100% measurement, or it might come as a, a dispensed preset weight of soil or some other control. This is no faults forward. On any engine assembly line, there, there will be a variety of operations, such as tightening bolts, fitting hoses, assembling gaskets, fitting electrical harnesses. When running down bolts, even though the tightening process might be complex, the process can be completely error-proofed. The tool can have the torque automatically set by the step in the program. A socket selector can be used to ensure that only one size of bolt can be run down. And the software controls on the tool can ensure that the correct tool is achieved and count the number of rundowns to ensure that we do not miss a bolt. So with a little bit of training, anyone can use this tool to complete a rundown operation to a high degree of accuracy and with good outputs, because the control factors easily match the noise factors. This is no faults forward because our controls ensure the next step cannot take place before the data that validates the last step has been captured. However, if we take an electrical harness clip, a plastic clip, the operation is simple. The operator just presses the plastic clip into a preformed hole in a bracket, but the error proofing is difficult. How do we ensure that the operator puts it in the right hole, presses it home, and does not miss the operation? Bearing in mind that a typical electrical harness on an engine may have 15 to 20 of these. In any engine assembly process, there are a number of such operations that do not give process verification feedback easily. So from a process control point of view, it is difficult to ensure no faults forward. This slide is a summary of some of the key error-proofing checks that we need to implement on engine assembly. The green is the absolute, 100% error-proofing feedback control that we can get from certain operations. The orange is where the error-proofing is there, but it is, neither, it is not quite 100% and still relies on operator training or discipline to ensure that we get the, the right quality. The red is for certain operations where the feedback is not complete and it is difficult to get without significant investment, even in a high-tech environment such as ours. It is where you, have, you don't have green error proofing that it costs you in terms of waste, both in repairs and even worse, in warranty returns. And these will come and bite you at a later stage. The best practice we have is to use a display screen and instruct the operator to fit or check something and then press a button or pull a cord to verify that they have done this. Because we scan in the operator's build card at the beginning of each build cycle, it becomes the equivalent of writing your name on this engine. This therefore helps operators to take ownership of the build aspects that are difficult to control by other means. And it is in line with the historic practice of badging engines with the engine builder's name so that they can take pride in their work. And you may find one of these on your Ferrari, if you look carefully. <laughs> However, as I often observe when I watch our operators, even these checks can also easily become part of the process, so that the pressing of the verification button simply becomes a process step rather than a quality check. This reminds me of my early years in Ford, when we had rejects from an assembly line of aluminium front covers that we were supposed to press a front oil seal into but often delivered parts without that seal being present. We added a check after the seal pressing for the operator to add a paint mark to the seal to ensure that he or she had checked that the seal was there. However, only one day afterwards, I went back to have a look and found a pack of virgin seals, all with a paint dot on them, ready to be pressed in or omitted, as the case might be. The paint mark had become a process step. 
<coughs> in many Japanese plants, they train their operators when a quality check is required to stop, point a finger at the part to be checked and call out the name of the part or the check that is required. This is called Shisa Hankel, I believe, and can work well if the workforce is well disciplined but is not a concept easily transferred to Western culture. So let's take an example from our engine assembly plant where error proofing is difficult and then talk about factory four and what that might mean. At one stage in our build, we require the build operator to use a plastic fork tool and insert it alongside one of the eight conrods that we run down as a gap filler, a spacer, and then run down the conrod bolts. It is essential that this tool is used, but error proofing its use is difficult. The current method displays an instruction uh, to, 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 to use a tool, however there is no feedback to make sure that they have. So briefly let me introduce Factory 4. Factory 4 is the next industrial revolution. The first was steam power, the second was electrification, the third the use of computerization in manufacturing, and the fourth is defined by Wikipedia as manufacturing technologies used by the Internet of Things, big data, data mining, cloud computing, cognitive computing, artificial intelligence, along with autonomous robotics. At face value, we might look at an engine assembly plant or an aut automotive manufacturer and say they, well may, they may well be able to afford these things, but what has that got to do with niche manufacturing uh, at low volume? Well, actually, quite a lot. The drive through these revolutions has been from mass production, where you can have any car color as long as it's black, through to the lean manufacturing principle of a batch of one, where we are now trying to, to use high volume techniques to deliver high quality at low cost, but unique to every customer. And that's exactly where niche manufacturers already are, the low volume suppliers. They are well used to a unique customer focus and to delivering in small batches. The use of low cost plug and play consumer retail products, electronic products, coupled with easily configurable software will allow big jumps in process control without the requirement for high investment in process control electronics. This allows a fast paced change Sorry. This allows fast-paced changes in manufacturing capability. So let me finish with an example that we are currently working on. Artificial intelligence is applied when a machine mimics cognitive functions that we associate with human minds, such as learning and problem solving. Ricardo has been working closely with a startup company, Faultless AI, on a project to look at what they can do, particularly in the area of error proofing operations that are traditionally difficult to error-proof. Interestingly, Faultless AI's slogan is replacing robots with people. We gave them the task of looking at a process I previously described, running down Conrad bolts and using this plastic spacer during the rundown. Faultless AI positioned a relatively inexpensive camera above the workstation and monitored the operation for a period of time. They then wrote some software to look for and track the tools in defined zones, and, and sorry, and defined zones where the tools should appear uh, and turn them from red to green when this is achieved. Note that the system can cope if only one tool is used and moved to each position, or where several tools are used and pre-positioned and left for the whole operation. This demonstration can be modified to project light beams into the work area that turn from red to green, overlay red green colors on the build instructions, project them into Google glasses, display them on a monitor, use symbols for the color blind or use arrows to indicate the next Conrad position to move to. This system will not interfere with the build unless a tool is missing or misused. It can be interlocked to ensure that the nut runner does not operate uh, until the tools are identified. It can ask for operator confirmation that the fault really did occur and help the system learn. This method in assists the operator during the build process, defect prevention, rather than locking a potentially defective engine after it has been built, 
defect detection. Software will learn from false negatives and the operator can correct them as the system is developed. The interesting development here is when we move away from a system that identifies faults and processes and therefore faulty operators to a system where the operator has an intelligence working alongside them. The operator gets to help develop the coach and the coach gets to help them on a Monday morning after a late night by prompting them rather than stopping the process. It becomes an instructor and a guide rather than a supervisor. My colleagues from Faultless AI are here today and they are happy to talk to people after this lecture. They call this approach Smart Coach. So to finish, let's look back at our P diagram that illustrates the Conrod bolt rundown and the use of the plastic spacers. The use of these spacers relies on training, but because there is no definite control to react to any of our noise factors, i.e. lack of concentration, there is always the risk that the tool will not be used, so there's a risk of generating waste in the form of a repair. However, if our AI system, artificial intelligence system, is developed, we can now replace our control factor with a smart coach, in this case a camera and some clever software, and this gives the opportunity to error-proof operations where it would have been difficult to do so before. Thank you.